Hi, my name is Nana and welcome to my channel, A Puzzling Lamb. So it's finally time to talk about how the first ever Danish Speed Puzzling Championship went. If you haven't watched my previous video where I talk about my training for the competition, please go watch that one. This video is going to be all about the competition itself and be prepared. I have a lot of thoughts that will probably be a lot of rambling in this video. <laughs> so, the competition was held in Aarhus and it ran for two days. The first day was the pairs competition and the individual competition, which consisted of two preliminary rounds and the final. And then the next day it was the teams competition. And I participated in all three categories. But before I get into how I did at the competition. Let's just talk about everything else you could do other than competing. So it was just really well organized and it was in a really lovely space. So you had the big competition room, high ceiling, lots of natural light, and there wasn't a lot of room for spectators inside the room. But outside of the room, in the area where we were when we were not competing, there were actually a big window so you can look into the room. It was really well sound isolated so you could talk freely and still see what was going on inside the room. I did manage to take a, some pictures, take a little bit of video, also got a little bit from other people. So put that up here all through this video. Oh, and also, they had a professional photographer. So actually the company Creative Oak very kindly sponsored a photographer for the competition. And I'll show some of the pictures that he took, but I'll make a little note each time so you can see that those are not pictures I took. It will be pretty easy to spot. The pictures that look really professional <laughs> was by the professional photographer. And also, just to clarify, I'm going to talk a little bit and uh, talk about different sponsors throughout this video. This video is not sponsored by anyone, but yeah, luckily a lot of different people and companies sponsored the competition. But anyway, yeah, the place was awesome. They had also put up a swapping table. So there was a table filled with puzzle and people could bring their own puzzles and just swap them for similarly priced puzzles, similar piece count puzzles. I didn't participate in that, but there were a lot of people that swapped puzzles. It was a really fun idea. Then Dansk Puzzlespilsforening, the Danish Jigsaw Puzzle Association, who 
organized the whole event, they also had a stall where they sold a little bit of merchandise. So let me show you. And if you were a paying member of the association, which I am, you, there were actually a little bit of discount on the things. So I got a tote bag with the Danish Jigsaw Puzzle Association's logo. So that was really lovely. And they had also gotten these puzzle box top holders made. So I, of course, had to buy one of these. So it's these really nice wooden ones that you can take apart so they don't take up any room if you have to take it with you and put it together. And I have used it a little bit and it's actually really sturdy. It's a really nice box top holder, this one. But at that stall, there was also a raffle, but not just any raffle. So when you bought raffle tickets, the tickets were actually puzzle pieces and they had laid out on the table this is where I'm going to show you some pictures or video. They had laid out on the table the outline of the puzzle with all the puzzle pieces. So you had your tickets, your puzzle pieces, and then you had to figure out where they went on the puzzle. And if they were on the spot where the piece should be, if there were a little dot, then you had won a prize. So there were a couple of different prizes. I think there was someone that was sponsored by Augsburger, who also sponsored sponsored the competition puzzles. And I actually won a Ravensburger jigsaw puzzle frame. Again, I'll show you a picture of it. It's too big for me to have here. So that was really awesome. There were some other puzzles you could win. You could win some chocolate <laughs> because there was a chocolate company that had sponsored the event. So also when you got into your t table to compete, there were a few pieces of chocolate there, really nice. And then there were the main prize which was a giant puzzle, <laughs> which one of my team members actually won. So yeah, it was amazing. And that raffle, that was such a good idea. It was so much fun and actually quite difficult <laughs> to find the right spot for the pieces. Then also the Danish Jigsaw Puzzle Web Shop, Puzzle Shop, also had a stall where they sold a lot of puzzles at discounted prices. And I was really good. I'm really proud of myself. I didn't buy a single one. <laughs> I was tempted, but I stopped myself. I didn't buy a single one, but there were a lot of people that did. And it was a really good idea to be able to buy puzzles at the competition. And also, there were actually, throughout the weekend, people sitting around at the tables doing puzzles. So, yeah, it was really fun and just... Overall, the whole atmosphere, it was amazing. Everyone was happy. Everyone was supportive. It was so easy to talk to people. And just being around people with the same hobby as you, it's such an amazing experience. Really, if you have the opportunity to go to a speed puzzling competition, just go. It doesn't matter if you're not any good at speed puzzling, if you don't really care about speed puzzling. It's just so much fun to be there and perhaps even just go as a spectator. It It's just an amazing atmosphere. It definitely was at this competition. And I know that there were a lot of people who competed, who was just there for fun. The organizers had been so great. Every time they talked about the competition, every time they advertised about the competition someplace. They were so good at telling people yeah, that you can compete, no problem, even if you don't have any experience, even if you don't have any ambition to be in any particular spot, place, just being there. And it was, it was so amazing. And I'm also just so impressed with how many people came, how many people competed. Yeah, I'm already really looking forward to next year. Yeah, it was just amazing. Oh, and one other thing that was really great is that in that room where we all were when we weren't competing, there were actually, I think, two different big screens where you could first see the puzzle that was being competed at with at the moment, and also the results came in there as people finished. So that was really great that you could follow along like that. And also when 
I finished most of the time. I had no idea how well I'd done. So it was great that you could just come out of the room and see right away what place you were in. So yeah, the whole thing was so professional, especially considering that this is the first time that the event happened. <laughs> so let's get in to the competition itself. So as I said, the first competition was the pairs competition. And I competed with Christina, who is also one of my team members. And I was, we were both really happy that the first event was the pairs competition. I think that was a really good choice because I think we were all, well, I was at least a little bit of nervous, excited. This was my first competition ever. So the fact that, yeah, the first time was with a partner. <laughs> I mean, you, you had someone to share the excitement with. It made the whole thing a little bit more easier. <laughs> yeah, I really like that. And the room was packed. Let me just see. We were 72 pairs. I'm so impressed again. I'm so impressed with how many people participated. So we shared a table with another pair. Everyone shared tables. So we really didn't have that much room. So that was also a thing that made us a little bit more nervous when we practiced together. We didn't really think about space. So we just used all the space we needed. This was a lot less space. But anyway, we were excited. We were nervous about what puzzle we would get. That was actually th the thing throughout the competition I was most nervous about. Not so much how well I would do, but how difficult the puzzle we would get was. But the one we got for the pairs competition was this one. <laughs> and I think we, I won't say we panicked at the beginning, but yeah, didn't help on our, on our nerves this puzzle. But very quickly, you know, we started flipping over all the pieces and I'll show you some pictures. One of the volunteers that were there, and thank you so much to all the volunteers, was one of the lovely ladies that I was on a puzzle weekend with. She also has an Instagram, I'll put her up here. And randomly, I think, she was actually really close to us during the competition, so she actually took some pictures of us during this puzzle, which was so lovely. Not the puzzle, but the fact that she took some pictures. But yeah, we started turning over all the pieces, sorting out the edge. And I just quickly said, okay, it's fine. It's a difficult puzzle, but it's a good pairs puzzle. It is, you can very clearly work on your each work on a se your own section. So Christina, she loves skies. She's really good at skies. So it's just like, you do the sky. <laughs> so she got all the sky pieces. We, yeah, we sorted out the sky pieces while we sorted out um, the edge pieces and turned over all the pieces. I've talked about it before. I think I talked about it in my last video. I'm not good at sorting anything other than the edge pieces at the beginning. But here the sky was really obvious. So we sorted out that and she got all the sky pieces and the edge pieces for the sky. And then I had all the other pieces and I started out by pulling out all of these very pink pieces because they just really stood out. But when I started working on them, I very quickly realized that was not a good place to start for me. Very difficult. So instead, what I did was this line here with those purple flowers in the background. So I actually pretty quickly got that part done. I did some of this other, you know, the hills in the background. That was pretty easy. And I just kind of worked my way down. Then when Christina was done with the sky, we put our sections together. We had worked just, you know, opposite side of each other. We put them together. So the puzzle was you know, in one big section. <laughs> and she came down and helped with this part. And I believe at one point we, we sorted out all the pieces that were only green. And at this point, the puzzle was really difficult. One thing I do a lot when I speed puzzle is that if I get stuck on a section, I quickly just jump to another section and then come back to it later with fresh eyes. 
But with this, there was just nowhere else to jump. The whole thing was just flowers. <laughs> so it was really difficult. But we did it. I have time here. Time here. We did it in one hour, five minutes and five seconds. So I really think we did well. And we came in 17 on the 17th place out of 72 teams. So I was really happy with that. I... Before the competition, I really didn't know. <laughs> I didn't have any particular goals of what, sh what place to be in because since this is the first time with the Danish championship, I had no idea how the general level was. So I was really happy. I did kind of hope for in all the categories that I would be around the middle. <laughs> so 17th place out of 72 was really well done. We were both really happy with that. And also one thing I just forgot to mention about this puzzle. We recognized it right away. This puzzle was used at Worlds last year in one of the individual rounds. But I don't know how many people had actually done this puzzle before. I know that some of the people organizing this event from Dansk Puzzlespilsforening, the Danish Jigsaw Puzzle Association, they were at Walls last year and they were also competing in the Danish championship because it is for this competition, Ravensburger selected all the puzzles. That wasn't the Danish association that did that. So, and they had made sure the ones who wanted to compete from the Danish association, they had made sure to not see the puzzles. They did not know either what puzzles they were doing so they could compete with us. And but I talk, we talked with them afterwards and actually none of the Danes who competed last year at Worlds got this puzzle. And I think only one of them had done it later. And the other one, the one we uh, spoke to, she said she had considered trying this puzzle but really didn't want to. <laughs> but I also think that this is a puzzle where it's not that big of an advantage to have done it before. I mean, I think it's very limited how many strategies you can use with this puzzle. But yeah, we were really happy with the result. And just to put our time into perspective, so we did it in one hour, five minutes, five seconds. The pair that won, Astrid and Olivia, did it in 37 minutes and 7 seconds. And then there were actually quite a big of a leap up to second place. They came in 4 minutes and 23 minutes later with a time of 41 minutes and 30 seconds, Iris and Sophie. And then 1 minute 54 seconds later, at 43 minutes and 24 seconds, Maiken and Marianne. So that was some amazing times. But I'm also really happy with our time. Then the next round, the next competition was the individual round A. And that was the round I was in. So again, pretty nervous about the image. And oh, actually, so the pairs puzzle had been used before uh, in a competition. It's not a newly released puzzle. But the rest of the puzzles for this competition, it's not unreleased puzzles but it was very recently released puzzles and actually I don't think any of them are on the Danish market yet so I don't think that anyone have tried any of the puzzles before then they at least have had to get it somewhere else but I think that was really nice but the one we got in my round was this beautiful beautiful very difficult <laughs> puzzle by Demelza Horton. So I really love her art and you can see really difficult image. But my strategy here, I sorted out the edge pieces, but again, I didn't do the edge pieces first. So I think I started by sorting out the blue piano here. I quickly, very quickly did this gold detail, this blue here up at the top, uh, her dress, her hair was pretty easy to spot. I did this carpet here quite quickly also I believe and the edge that went along here and then we had the sides here <laughs> but it was difficult. It was definitely difficult 
But then when you look closer at it, so there are some bigger sections here. And then I pretty quickly discovered that up in the corner here, there are like some foggy bits, if you can say it like that. So I pulled those out. There are some roses. There are some, like, I don't know, poof balls. Um, and there's a little bit of a darker section here. The green here. So when you get into the puzzle a bit, you I didn't notice... Actually, quite a lot of things you could sort, but still, it was difficult. And I did it in 1 hour, 13 minutes and 46 seconds, which placed me in the 15th place out of 45 participants. And it did qualify me for the final. It was the top 25 that qualified. And actually, if we look at the other times... So one of my team members, Nina, she was right in front of me. So I noticed at one point she finished and I felt like I finished pretty quickly, almost immediately after her. But I came in 15th place. She came in 13th place. So we were actually four people who finished Oh, so what did I say? She finished in 12th place. We were four people who finished within the same minutes. So Nina, in 12th place, finished at 1 hour, 13 minutes and 3 seconds. And I finished in 15th place at 1 hour, 13 minutes and 46 seconds. So we were a couple of people there that were really, really close. <laughs> I mean, if I had been on, like, 45 seconds faster I would have moved up quite a lot of places but yeah a lovely puzzle the person who finished first Clara did it in 52 minutes and 22 seconds really amazing time but then when you had done you know you could just breathe a little take a few pictures and then silently leave the room so Christina my pairs partner another team member she was also in that round so we were out there waiting excitedly to see when she would finish and as i said it was the top 25 who made it to the final and she finished and she finished in the 26th place we felt so bad for her so when she came out i i think it probably looked like we were at a funeral we were so sad for her and told her that she just missed the final. And she was really sad about it. I think it meant more to her to make it to the final than she had thought it would. She was so sad for about 10 minutes or so. <laughs> and then one of the organizers came over to her and said they probably hadn't explained that properly. But international participants, international People, people not from Denmark, <laughs> were allowed to compete. But you had to live in Denmark to make it to the podium. So if you came first, second or third, but you didn't live in Denmark, you wouldn't get on the podium, it would go to the next person. And we knew that. But what they hadn't quite explained was that it was the top 25 Danish people, people living in Denmark, who made it to the final. So since there were a person in the top 25, I think it was someone from Germany, that person also got to participate in the final. But since there was one in the top 25 that didn't live in Denmark, it was actually 26 people who made it to the final. So she just made it to the final. I think that was quite a roller coaster ride for her. <laughs> but... I think it's a very good rule. I think it's great that people not living in Denmark can compete. I mean, there's, there are not that many speed puzzling competitions around the world yet. So I think it's really great that you can compete in other countries' competitions. But I also think it's great that they don't take up places from the people who actually live in Denmark. It is the Danish Speed Puzzling Championship, so it's also nice to know that it will be someone living in Denmark who actually wins. But then, after that, and that whole roller coaster <laughs> for Christina, we had a little bit of a break. Because then, of course, it was time for round B, where Christine, one of my team members, was in. And I actually managed to 
get one of the puzzles from that competition. So that was this one. And when me and Christina first saw this one, we were just like, oh, that is so much easier than the one we got. I mean, look at them side by side. Which one would you choose in a competition? I would definitely choose this one. We were so sure this was so much easier. Not perhaps easy, but easier than the one we got. But it seems like people really struggled. It seems like this puzzle is really difficult. And we were just like, but you can sort out her hair. You can sort out that green. You can sort out the dog. But we were watching at the side for a bit at the top players and when we've hit like the like the, the 30 minute mark even the top players had quite a lot left so i am so looking forward to trying this puzzle and also when i look at it closer i can definitely see that it's a difficult puzzle but i'm really looking forward to trying this one first of all compare my time with the puzzle i did in my round but also just to see how i would have placed in this round and actually where in my round with what we would have thought would be the most difficult puzzle. The winning time was 52 minutes, 22 seconds, where this winning time was 57 minutes, 24 seconds. So by all logic, this is the most difficult puzzle. I still don't quite understand why, but I'm really excited to try it. I think this really is a deceptively difficult puzzle. Oh, and in this round, Christine was in, as I said, and she unfortunately didn't make it to the final. But I still think that three out of four in my team making it to the final is really, really well. I really hoped I would make it to the final. It was kind of my goal, but I also knew, also didn't know if that was realistic at all. So if I hadn't made it to the final, I wouldn't necessarily be disappointed with my performance. But I just really wanted to make it to the final so I could, you know, experience the most of the competition. And I didn't make it to the final, as I said. And this is really fun, actually. So when there were about five minutes until we had to go into the room and get ready, ready for the competition, Christina came up to us and said, I've had a vision. I think I know what the puzzle will be. Because since both of the puzzles for the uh, preliminary rounds were very reasonably, re recently released puzzles, she had checked out Ramsburger's page to see what puzzles, 500 piece puzzles they released recently. So she said, I think one of these three, but I think it's going to be this one. And we were all just, oh, I hope not. It looks difficult. We laughed a little bit about it. We go into the room. They count down. We open the bags. And I just think she was right. Oh my God, she was right. She guessed the puzzle. And I don't know, I think perhaps it did help me a little bit. Gave me a few seconds extra <laughs> that I had actually seen the image before. We you know, had a few minutes where we discussed how we would handle an image like that. But anyway, the image is here. It was this puzzle, a nice image, a fun image, I would think normally. But I also thought this one was really, really difficult. I did not do the edge first with this one. Very difficult edge. I, the first thing I did, I believe with this, this, all this here at the top but then i just really struggled yeah I, this cat here was pretty easy to spot it's a very different style from the rest but i just felt like there were several times where, where i were like okay this pattern here i'll be able to spot that i look at the pieces i just couldn't see any of them i think okay it this here i'll be able to spot that i look at the pieces i just can't find any so i really felt like i was all over the place i really felt it was difficult and i felt this was actually more difficult than the one i did in my individual round even though my time was actually faster so the one in the round a i did 
in 1 hour 13 minutes and 46 seconds. I did this one in 1 hour 7 minutes and 18 seconds. So, yeah, actually quite a lot faster than the last one, but I felt like I struggled more with it. But still really happy and I came in 20 on the 21st first place. It was difficult for me to say in 21st place out of 54 people in the final. So I am so happy with that. So happy with my placements in both rounds. And yeah, just, you know, happy about how the whole day went. Oh, I forgot to mention. So in the final, the winner was Iris, who did it in 49 minutes, 43 seconds. And in second place, Clara in 50 minutes and 10 seconds. And in third place, Astrid in 52 minutes and 4 seconds. And one thing I haven't talked about yet. So the podium was place 1, 2 and 3. And Augsburger had sponsored some prizes. I think first and second place got some gift cards to Puzzle Shop. But what we really need to talk about is the trophies. They are so beautiful. So they are made by Iris, one of the organizers, who is also an artist. And she made them in collaboration with a ceramicist? Ceramic? Ceramist? A person who makes ceramics. I don't know what that's called in English. But they made it together. I'll put up their Instagrams here. And they are just so beautiful, so different from any other speed puzzling trophies I have seen. And when they revealed them a couple of days before the competition, I I commented on the post. I was just like, I'm so sad. I don't have any chance of getting in the top in top three in any of the competitions. They are so pretty, those trophies. So I knew I wouldn't get in the top three. <laughs> I knew it was unrealistic, but I'm just really happy with my 21st place in the individual final and my 17th place in pairs. So the next day, it was time for the team's event. And there were 20 teams competing, which is also pretty good. I remember for the longest of time, we were only like two or three teams registered. I remember I actually wrote to the Danish association if they had like a minimum amount of teams that had to register for the competition to actually happen. Uh, we were so afraid that they would cancel the team's event if we were only three teams. But they th said that they would go ahead with it in any way, no matter what. But we ended up being 20 teams, which I really think is impressive. I mean, Denmark, we are not a very big country, okay? 20 teams is really impressive. So again... We were really excited. We had no idea, you know, how we would place. I had the feeling that if I, that, that my best placement would probably be in the team's competition because I really think we work together well as a team. There were a few of my team members who joked a little bit about top five, but I was just like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but we were ready. We had figured out, you know, who opens the bag, who takes out the puzzle, who takes out all the pieces, you know. We were ready. And the puzzle we got was this one, another Demelza Horton puzzle. So, so beautiful, but also quite difficult as a team, we thought. So we took out the edge pieces. I started with the edge here and the edge here. Christina took the curtains here and then, you know, it was a bit difficult. I think Nina did the castle here. I know all the blue pieces were pulled out, but you know, this is one of those puzzles where compared to the Payas puzzle. So this was all would also have been a nightmare to do as a team, but here you could very easily say, okay, you do the sky, I do the flowers. Here there were not a lot of like bigger sections to pull out so we were all of us were kind of all over the place i remember that when i had done the edge pieces here or the the two edges here i did some of the white here but 
then I believe I moved on to the mirror part here and then we sp switched places a couple of times and at one point I was just sitting right in front of all the blue pieces that had been sorted out. So I started on that. So I work, worked very much on all the blue here. I also ended up working on this drum here, I remember. But, you know, this is one of those puzzles where at the end, or like, I think when there was about, I think we were about like 15 minutes away from finishing. It was just a lot of taking a piece and just putting it in the puzzle, you know, the... There really wasn't. I didn't sort anymore at that point. It was just putting in pieces. And the winning team. Let me just find the times here. So the winning team did this in 43 minutes and 16 seconds. That is a crazy time. I can't remember where we were at that point. How much we were missing. But that is a crazy time. So that team consists of. Astrid, Iris, Sophie, and Olivia, and I believe they're all going to the world to the world's competition, and I think they're going to do so well. It's just amazing. And actually, there were 18 minutes and 50 seconds until the next team finished. So second place was Maiken, Marianne, Annette, and Dorte. So that is also quite a leap from first to second place. But at that point. When the second team finished, we were actually pretty close to being finished too. I don't think any of us said anything, <laughs> but we were pretty close. And I'll put up a video of our last stretch of the puzzle. So you can see, or you can hear, when the third team finishes. And just look how little we have left. You can hear it when people start clapping. That's when the third team finishes. So that was just so close. We finished eighteen seconds after third place but we were just so happy we had never thought we could get in fourth place so we were just over the moon you know we hugged everything was good but then one of the organizers came over to us and told us that we were in fourth place but the team that finished third was an international team that couldn't get on the podium so we were actually in the official third place and would get on the podium. And I have a video, my mother took that where we finish. And you can see how happy we are. We are. And you can see one of the organi organizers coming up to us and just and how we react when we are told that we are actually on the podium. So yes, I can't believe it, but look, I came home with a trophy. So just look at this. I'll see if it can focus. Just look how beautiful it is. So I I mean, we were just ecstatic. We had not seen that coming. It was amazing. And I actually also have a video from when we got our trophies. And it's, of course, in Danish, but basically he first asks me what artist made the puzzle for the final. And of course I fumbled with the name. And then he talks about, he notices that we have matching earrings and asks about those. And if 
it's some that one of us made and I've, I tell him I made them <laughs> and he asks if you can buy them and you know so I, I got a little free advertisement there <laughs> that wasn't planned but yeah I'll show you the video here I want to start by saying a, a, a congratulations to the third fastest uh, team which was the two teens puzzlers with the time of one hour four minutes and 49 seconds that is Henrietta Selter Stephanie Kip, Emilia Lieberman, and Daniel Lieberman. Bravo! Og så vil vi gå videre til tredje plads. Det er så en rik mere, som er tid på en time og fem minutter og syv sekunder. Det er Christine Riber Thomsen, Nina Gebhardt, Christina Louis Ken Lund, og Nonna Strandby Lambert. Kom op! Det er en virkelig god motiv. Hvem er der som har designet den? Det er min... Hvor er det? Det er min sorten. I har også matchende øreringer, kan jeg se. Har I nævnt dem selv? Kan man få dem et sted, eller er det et samling? Altså, jeg sælger faktisk, at det er sælger også på bestilling. Okay, men man kan bestille hos dig. Super. Stort tillykke til... So, that was just the perfect end to a perfect weekend. We just... It was amazing to finish on a high, I think. First of all, I really think it was a good idea to have teams at the end like that. It it just flowed really nice, but it was also really nice that we ended on a high. <laughs> I mean, if teams had been the first competition, it would only have went downhill from there. <laughs> but we were so happy, and I'm so happy I have one of these. I have to rearrange my shelf now so I can get this displayed somewhere. <laughs> so you can see it in all my videos. I'm just so proud of all of us. We did so well. Yeah, I kind of don't have words for it. I'm just so happy. And one thing also, this image here, it was difficult, but clearly we did well. And actually, you can hear there are no pieces in here. I Yesterday evening, I actually just finished putting it together myself, not speed puzzling it. Just slowly, because when you're speed puzzling in a team, there was so many details I hadn't noticed in this puzzle. I mean, you basically only see what you puzzle yourself. So that was really lovely, and I now have to send it on so my other team members can also try it. We saw this puzzle and the Demel other Demelza Horting puzzle that were used in individual. We can see there's a site in Denmark that has it on their website, but has it as first expecting it in stock in, I believe, the end of October. So I'm really glad I have that puzzle and I'm sending this on to my other team members. But when it comes to the Danish market, I have to buy it for myself too. It's really a lovely puzzle. And I just think that all of the puzzles that have been chosen for the competition, and again, that is not the organizers who've chosen that, that's Raunsburger. I think they were really good. We were all really nervous after seeing what puzzle was chosen for the Finnish championship. That was a nightmare. But I think they were all really well. I mean, they were difficult. And especially the Pears puzzle, it was difficult. But it was actually a pretty good Pears puzzle. I mean, if this puzzle had to be in the competition, <laughs> it was good that it was in Pears. And the other ones... Now, I haven't tried the one from, from the individual round B yet, but the ones I did were difficult puzzles. And I also think that's okay <laughs> that in a national competition that it's difficult puzzles, but it were very doable puzzles. Oh, and I completely forgot to talk about what the time frame was for the different competitions. So in the pairs competition, we had two hours, and in the first individual rounds, we also had two hours, which is longer than a lot of other competitions. But again, I talked with one of the organizers and they said it was a very deliberate choice because they really wanted this 
to be a positive experience for everyone. They wanted as many people as possible to actually finish. And I also think especially when they've made such a big big deal out of inviting everyone, <laughs> even people who've never speed passed before, I think it was a really good idea to put a little bit of a higher time frame. So actually in pairs out of 72 pairs, let me just see, 57 finished. I think that's really well. In my individual round, we were 50 we were 45 participants and 36 people finished in round B. There were 44 participants and 34 finished. And in the final, then in the final, we only had one and a half hours. So two hours in the preliminary rounds and one and a half in the final, which I think was a good decision to have it a little bit shorter. In the final, you know, it is supposed to be the best that are in the final. But I also really think it was a good idea to have longer in the preliminary. But in the final, we were 54 participants and 48 finished. That's really, really great. In teams, we had three hours to finish a thousand piece puzzle. We were 20 teams and there were actually only one team that didn't finish. And it was a team with only three people on it. So I'm sure when I look at that time, they had they had put together 731 pieces. So if they had had a fourth member, they probably also would have finished within the time frame. So I really think just overall, people did really well. And yeah, the whole thing was just organized so well. I really have nothing bad to say. It would have been nice if there had been a live stream, but they also said that that was a conscious decision. It's the first time the competition is held, so they really wanted to just focus on making a good event and not having to focus on a live stream. And I think that was a very understandable decision. But again, it was really nice that there were a, a professional photographer walking around. And again, look at this. I'm so, so happy. I... Yeah, I'm going to live off of this for a very long time. <laughs> so what are my speed puzzling plans for the future? Going into this, or before I started training for this, I really didn't have that much of an interest in speed puzzling. The reason I do puzzling is to relax, to get to know a piece of art, and you do not do that when speed puzzling. I have heard people saying they actually relax quite a lot when speed puzzling. I don't. And I definitely don't get to know the artwork. And also, I really didn't want it to take time away from my normal puzzling. But training up to the competition, I figured out that, well, it's speed puzzling. It doesn't actually take that long. I mean, it's somewhere between an hour and two hours for me to finish a 500-piece puzzle. So I think it's very doable, very realistic for me to speed puzzle practice at least once a week without it really taking away too much time for my normal puzzle, puzzling. Now, the other thing that has stopped me a little bit is if you really want to get good at speed puzzling, you have to try a whole lot of different types of puzzles. And honestly, I really don't want to spend a lot of money on puzzles I don't really like. But I think... This was just so much fun and I know <laughs> the level <laughs> will only go up from now on at these competitions. I think there are a lot of people who tried this for the first time, who figured out they want to do that. I think there'll be a lot more people now actually doing speed puzzling in Denmark. So if I want to just keep the level I'm at now, <laughs> get the same spots next year, I have to practice and I actually also really want to practice. I can definitely feel that I could really get into this. So I think from now on, I'm just going to buy all the 500 piece puzzles I meet in secondhand shops. And I hope to get to speed puzzle at least once a week. And I'm definitely going to try some different tactics now, strategies now. Try perhaps somewhere, sort the puzzle completely before starting it. Somewhere I do that where I look at a piece, figure out where it's going and just placing it approximately where it goes an image figuring out if there are some of those strategies that actually 
that I actually like more, that are easier for me, or what kind of images they're easiest for. So yeah, I can definitely get into practicing for this. And then I have actually bought a puzzle registered for an online competition. So speedpuzzle.eu puts on these online competitions. I talked about them in my latest video about training for the competition. And I'm competing in the one on the 27th, I believe, in of this month. So I also have to do a little bit of practice before that, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I am, even, even without having tried one of those online competitions yet, I know I'm probably going to participate in more of those in the future. Because right now, there are no other speed puzzling competitions in Denmark. I hope perhaps that it will start, that will start coming a bit more now that people know about it, <laughs> about speed puzzling. But for now, I'm looking forward to the 27th. I'm going to practice a lot more, hopefully compete in a more online competitions. And I am definitely going to the Danish Speed Puzzling Championship next year. I am already really looking forward to it. And again, if you have the opportunity to go to a speed puzzling competition, go no matter what your ambition is, even just go as a spectator. It is so much fun. And just thank you <laughs> to Dansk Puzzlespilsforening, the Danish Jigsaw Puzzle Association, and all of the sponsors for putting on such an amazing event. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please leave a like and consider subscribing. See you next time.